What's up, friendly neighborhood nerds? This is Judah Rad. And I'm Robo Strange. And we're pretty damn excited to welcome Ron Mars back to our show. They sometimes they come back. Sometimes. Um, <laughs> so in addition to giving us Kyle Rayner, he's also the writer behind one hell of a silver surfer run. And I have I own all of it, but I just grabbed like a quick handful. I have most of it right here, but yeah, I uh, one of my favorite runs in all of comics um, for my favorite character in all of comics. Um, so on January 19th, 2022, two very exciting things are happening. Uh, first and foremost, Silver Surfer Rebirth is hitting comic shops written and illustrated by the two Rons, uh, both Mars and Lim. Also, it'll be my birthday. So that's kind of my birthday present to myself. So <laughs> woo. anyway, uh, welcome back to the show, Ron. How are things? Uh, things are good. We uh, you know, took some planning to make sure that the book came out on your birthday, but thank you. We went to the mat. <laughs> uh, we went to the mat and made sure that that you would get a, a proper birthday present. So thank the you, so son. the check I sent you cleared then. That's good. That's yeah, good. it right, did. Yeah. Oh, oh, you guys, you guys are on the, best. Thank on you. the second redeposit, it cleared. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone who knows me knows I'm pretty excited about this. But first and foremost, I have to know. Um, Will Jack of Hearts or any other iconic cosmic characters from the surfer's rich history be making a surprise appearance in this run? Uh, there will be cosmic characters in this run. <laughs> will, will any of them have a heart over one of their eyes? It's possible. It's possible. Okay. Awesome. You're just gonna, you're just, you're just gonna have to read it. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, Marvel's press release states, and I'm just gonna kind of read it right off. Uh, Silver Surfer Rebirth will follow in the tradition of current hit titles such as X Men Legends and Symbiote Spider Man, which sees the greatest creators in Marvel history revisit their historic runs. Dot 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 dot. All right. So that lets us know this is gonna be set in the past, and we're gonna get some story in it. Uh, question is. When in the past, like what are some milestones that we would recognize that this story takes place among us? Um, we actually talked about that. We said, you know, we discussing it with Marvel, um, my editor, Darren Shan, uh, you know, where do we, where does this go? And he, you know, he gave me the option of, of placing this specifically, uh, you know, is it between issue, you know, 78 and 79? Or between, you know, on page six, panels five and five and six of issue 82. So, um, but I preferred to just say, you know, it's somewhere in there, somewhere after issue 75. Um, this so this is going to, this is going to relate to the Herald ordeal then? Possibly. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be after the Herald ordeal, but not necessarily pick up any threads from it. Um, this is a pretty ground floor read in terms of um you know you you don't need to go to wikipedia and look up the continuity everything you need to know for the story is going to be in the story okay all right so cool so um regarding the character of norrin rad um can can we expect this story to sort of change or uh teach us something new about norrin rad um and uh will this story all foreshadow any bigger plans for uh, the Silver Surfer in the future? Um, well, if you don't learn something new about the Silver Surfer, I'm not really doing my job. Um, you should you should get something out of it, right? And I think uh, I'm actually um, working on the tail end of issue five right now. So I'm working on sort of exactly what that is. Like what, what does he learn about himself? What do you learn about him? Um, and as far as setting up anything that comes later, you know, we're, we're set up for five issues. Um, we'd love to do more if the opportunity comes up, but uh, this is going to be a, uh, the, the story will be complete in five issues. There are plenty of other places to go after that um, if we get the opportunity, but um, you're sort of going to get a, a beginning, middle, and end, or as much of an end as you ever get in monthly superhero comics um, out, of the, out of the miniseries. Awesome. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for this, man. Um, so let's talk about Ron Lim for a second. Um, I met Ron Lim once at a. a sorry, my cat just ambushed me. Uh, I I met Ron at a amazing Hawaii Comic Con, and it was like it was a murderer's row of like dudes. Uh, we, there it was Ron, Jim Starlin, Joe Rubenstein, George Perez, 
and uh yeah it was just a it was just a great group of creators um but he's like one of the nicest guys ever and uh his son was there like doing sketches for people and it's just so cool um one thing that i said to him was that my my favorite thing about his the way he draws the silver surfer is that it's the most jacked and shiny silver surfer out there like just the most muscular and brilliantly shiny version of the character um what's what's your favorite thing about working with ron um well one ron is totally the happiest dude in comics he's just like he's he's happy all the time he's uh, uh he's a uh, pleasure to work with from a work standpoint the, you know the storytelling of draftsmanship all of that stuff is great um but uh you know he's he's the first artist i ever worked with in this business literally the first artist I ever worked with mm -hmm. so this is very much homecoming for me and um uh you know he's just a classic artist his you know the storytelling the rendering um the way he approaches a page uh it's it's was just like you know putting a, putting a glove back on uh once i started getting the pages from the first issue uh he he does what he does and he's really good at it um and his surfer is the surfer for a lot of people um i think a lot of people grew up on ron surfer so that's the one that um that's the one that they think of you know a, a generation behind us people think of you know the john busema surfer um a generation the other side of us think of the mike allred surfer but um, but I think for a lot of people, Ron Lim's surfer and Ron Lim's San Thanos, for for that matter, um, are the are the the primal versions. That's dope. So, quick, quick and easy question for you, especially since you know with the MCU talks and where the next movies and everybody wants the Silver Surfer to come to the MCU, right? So, my question for you is, who plays Norn Red? And follow-up question, uh, who probably voices, who voices Galactus? Voices Galactus? I mean, Galactus isn't going to be a cloud this time? <laughs> oh, man. Name I really the fart. not. <laughs> um, I, uh, I don't really have answers to either one of those, because that's not stuff that I think about. Uh, uh, I, I, number of my, number of my friends have, said you know keanu reeves should voice the surfer and i don't know i don't know if that's uh might be a little too surfs up uh yeah but uh Whoa. you know i think one of the you know one of the maybe even the biggest strength of the of the mcu is is the casting they always get the right people um yeah. And they they get they keep getting the right people. So I'm you know uh, I'm sure that the surfer will eventually show up. For sure. Uh, and I'm sure, sure that when he does, it's going to be the right person. Absolutely. I want Gilbert Gottfried for Galactus. Like I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants Gilbert Gottfried for anything? <laughs> He's good as a parrot. I like him as a parrot. Right. Uh, so <laughs> that, that was his wheelhouse right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess I guess I, I I don't want to I want to reattack this one more time then then if we use a storyline then because you're coming from a writer's perspective and it could be one of your one of your stories which storyline uh, from the comics would you like to see on the big screen? Well, you got it. I mean, to 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 honor the right people and to tell the right story, you got to go with uh, Fantastic you? Four, 48, 49, and fifty. Um, that's that's how you introduce the Silver Surfer and Galactus, um, but obviously that you know that's predicated upon having a Fantastic Four uh, movie in place, and maybe this is the second Fantastic Four movie. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now we know how to set it up, Kevin Feige. I know you watch the show. I know you're a huge fan, so <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> so I have to just apologize in advance. Um, I've badgered you. I badgered you about this the last time we spoke, and I'm pretty sure I've also like bugged you on twitter about it too because whenever it comes up i have to say something so sincere sincere apologies if i'm feeding a fed horse but um in my opinion frankie ray was norn rad's truest love um i would say more so than mantis alicia masters or even shalabal um this, i'm gonna i'm gonna get ripped up uh for this but that's just that's just how i feel um how how could you let morg do what he did to her uh, I think the real question is, 
how did Frankie Ray willingly serve Galactus and lead him to populated worlds? Well, and that's some that's some heavy shit, man. That's that's really where the Herald the Herald ordeal storyline came out of is that I, you know, I obviously took the book over from from Jim Starlin, and a lot of what Jim did on the book was sort of the psychological manipulation and um, the underpinnings of his guilt and all that in serving Galactus, and so you extrapolate that out and you go, well, you know, Galactus had had other heralds. He had you know Airwalker, um, the robot. That's fine. Uh, he had Terax, who's kind of a jerk. Um, Our Lord. So he had he had other other heralds, but none of them were like from Earth. None of them were were human. So that storyline came out of me figuring out, well, how how do you just if if you're Frankie Ray, how do you justify what you do? Um, so that's kind of where the storyline came out of, and it was really the first story I wanted to tell when I took over the book. Um, but it just got pushed back almost two years because we had Infinity Gauntlet crossovers and a and a bunch of characters that editorial wanted to reappear again. So you know, it it ended up just getting bumped back and bumped back. So it it ended up in issues seventy to seventy five. So I I actually have a way more important question uh, than that. Um, how weird is it to be badgered about that thirty years after it was done? That's, that's not even on the scale of weird <laughs> stuff that people, you know, people ask about. That's like, thank, thank you, Ron. <laughs> like sometimes, sometimes stuff, will, sometimes stuff that I've completely forgotten will will stick in somebody's stick in somebody's mind, and you know, like at a show or a signing, or you know, even even online. Um, you know, it'll be this like minor in the scheme of things, this minor uh, this minor thing that you did that you you know that you forgot about and but man it's it's foremost in somebody's mind and they really want to talk to you about it which has got to be so much worse for them well i mean look it's 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 all great i mean it's it's right. it's great that that people remember stuff that i've forgotten at this point but <laughs> um so it's it's ultimately all flattering but sometimes you find yourself in a position of going did, did i write that story what <laughs> what is this guy talking about like so like yeah i mean in, in judah's story you have a you have a well thought out and and then you know you kind of elaborate on it i could just imagine being the fan that was like hurt by this thing and and there's ron's like i don't even remember writing that guy you know well, <laughs> I'll, I'll always be honest and just say i just i was just making stuff up man that's it so, that's not a lot <laughs> so speak speaking of uh speaking of silver surfer stories that you've written um what what's your favorite arc actually can i guess i'm gonna guess uh is it dangerous artifacts um certainly in terms of of the whole package like it's it's hard to beat dangerous artifacts which was a graphic novel that i did with claudio castellini that it's a 48 pager and actually took him like three years to draw um it's beautiful and it's and it's some of the most amazing stuff i've ever i've ever been associated with um obviously that's a whole different thing than than doing a monthly book where the artist is churning out um at that point 22 or 23 pages a month um you know claudio wasn't doing 22 pages a year um it was it was a you know it's it's still this amazing looking book um and I'm very, I'm hugely happy with it, uh, but the edition that came out in the U.S. Um, just doesn't show off the book at all in terms of what the kind of work that that Claudio put into it and the and the the detail and the rendering and and um, what came out here was a was a you know standard forty eight page comic saddle stitched not even a square bound um, because it took Claudio long enough to finish it that there had been a regime change at Marvel. Mm. Uh, Tom DeFalco, who was the one that sort of saw Claudio's stuff in Italy at the Luca convention, had been the editor in chief and that's how it landed on my desk. Um, but by the time it actually came out, um, there, was, there was a new power structure in place. Tom wasn't there anymore. So the book was kind of an orphan in that sense. It, you know, nobody really had, um, nobody had ownership of it anymore. Uh, nobody had uh, nobody was invested in it, so it just kind of came out as a regular comic. 
Um, initially, the plans were it was going to be like a square bound color comic and a oversized black and white comic, like treasury it, edition size. It definitely deserves a treasury edition. That'd be awesome. Um, so, I, you know, hopefully some year or someday there'll be a, like an artist edition or something like that. Um, there are black and white editions of it uh, in the European market. Um, there's a there's a Spanish one. There's a German one. There's an Italian one. They're all they're all in black and white um, and oversized. Uh, and I just uh, I just talked to an editor in Croatia the other week that they're doing an edition of it now, and they wanted some you know they want to do an interview and and have some new you know so they would have some new content for it. So um, so the, the there are versions out there. The the Spanish one that came out two three years ago is. Um, phenomenal it was all it was all shot from the original art and claudio supervised the the, the printing and the production so um, that's probably the uh you know the pristine edition right now but i would love to get a bigger edition out over here all right um so silver surfer rebirth comes out january uh 19th the five issue miniseries um before we I heard that was on, i heard that was somebody's birthday uh, I yeah. have no idea. I have no <laughs> idea. Like, it's whatever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so before we bring in our uh, our guest uh, our guest question on uh, into the room, um, do you want to give any final words on uh, Silver Surfer Rebirth, uh, the series? Why people need to bring it up? What can they expect? And also, any other projects that uh, some Ron Mars fans might want to know about. Um, let's see, for Silver Surfer Rebirth, um, first one January 19th, second one a month after that, third one a month after that. That's kind of how we do it. Um, so and I, we're just having a ball on it. Uh, the pages, like I said, we're, we're, we've got four issues in the can and um, just thrilled with the way everything looks. And it's, it's just Ron and I going back to the playground and playing with a lot of the toys that, that we had at that point. Um, it's very obvious from the cover of the first issue, the Captain Marvel's in it. Um, uh, old school Captain Marvel. Old school, old school Captain Marvel. Um, wow. Uh, Captain Marvel's son, Legacy, who Ron and I created, is in it. Um, and you will see some other characters. Um, obviously, you're going to see Thanos in it, too. Um, yes. I'm, I'm not a fool. I'm not going to go back to the to telling a Silver Surfer story and not have Thanos pop up. So, That's right. Um, <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, it's just it's just us going back to the playground and and having fun and, and you know, very grateful to Marvel for letting us just have fun. They, there were really no, there were no parameters. There was just kind of a list of characters like, it'd be cool if some of these characters were in it. And so I think we got most all of them in there. Um, and... Uh, you know, it's 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 just a pleasure to be working with Ron again. It, um, awesome. Uh, it feels like going home. Dope, dope. And what about any other projects you're working on that uh, fans might want to know about? Uh, let's see. Uh, also on January 19th, the fourth issue of Almost American comes out, which is a real-life spy story that I'm doing Ooh. through uh, Aftershock. Like um, that number one, yep. That is a, uh, it's a real-life story of a couple of Russian intelligence operatives who wound up in the United States when they had to flee Russia and and the um, the real story of what happened to them. So um, I'm telling that story. I'm working with uh, working with that Russian intelligence operative, uh, Janos Neumann, um, to uh, do some other comic projects that will be released uh, probably one later in 22 and then stuff beyond that um i'm doing the swamp god serial in heavy metal magazine that comes out every month which is a uh, civil war horror story um, oh, nice nice uh, that i'm having a ball doing uh, i'm just trying to i'm looking around my office and like deciding what i can tell you and what i can't because there's, <laughs> there's like pages sitting over there that um that haven't been announced yet and i can't Actually, I mean, our, our audience already knows that you're working directly with Russian intelligence. So it's true. <laughs> um, it's true. Once, I'll, you know, I'll get I'll get texts fairly often that that you know, hey, call me. <laughs> your, when your Russian operative friend says, you know, call me. I don't want to. I don't want to type this. Yeah. Once, once yeah. in a while, you you know, you kind of wonder what's going on. Um, but uh, let me see. There's, there's another heavy metal serial that'll be out next year that hasn't been announced yet. Um, 
There's a Dynamite series coming out next year that isn't announced yet. I'm doing with uh, Andy Lanning. Um, there's Resolution, which is the um, crowdfunded book that I'm doing with Andy Lanning and Rick Leonardi. And then later in 22, uh, the original graphic novel that I'm doing with Rick Leonardi called uh, Blue Angel will be out from Naval Institute Press. And that's like a 140 page uh, military slash superhero story. Oh, oh yeah. Awesome. All right. And there's so, other there's other odds and ends and I'm working on a video game that I'm not really talking about. So Ooh. Ooh. Video that's video inter- game. That's interesting. Genre? Can you tell can you just say genre? Just like RPG fighter. Is it licensed? Um it is not it is not licensed. It's it, it's its own franchise. Okay. Hmm. No, are you are you avoiding my genre question? Um, yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and bring uh, Miracle Man in, uh, and he's going to ask you uh, a question. All right, welcome, Miracle Man. I hope it wasn't too cold in our waiting room, and and the uh, and the snacks were good back there. It was good. They were they were good, much better snacks this time. Last time you just had the dog treats, and I, I really it was a big step up. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. For sure, for sure. Go ahead with your question. Ron, thank you. I, I just want to say huge fan. I uh, love your work. Um, and I, I'm sure you probably hear this question a lot lately. And, you know, it's it's come up. Um, it's a big deal on the aftermarket. So I figured I'd, I'd ask you uh, and get the get it from the man himself. Um, uh, here we go uh, with a copy of Mystic number 15 here. And for those of you who don't know, Cross Gen. Ron wrote uh, Mystic, beautiful, fantastic series, really a lot of fun. But my question is, Ron, when, first of all, whose decision was it to put Harry Potter in this book, yours or your penciler, Brandon Peterson? And follow-up question, were you ready to fist fight J.K. Rowling immediately afterwards? Uh, Harry Potter, I have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) Sure, I'm sure that's not a thing that actually happened. I'm sure it isn't. I'm I, sure it isn't. I, I, I'm sure that I'm sure that that book doesn't have Harry Potter or the Seven Dwarves or Doctor <laughs> Fate or Gandalf or anyone even slightly recognizable Definitely in not. those pages. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, that, that's it, the right answer. Just, you know, it, you could uh, in a in a bygone era, you could get away with stuff like that. Right. Um, and nobody would nobody would really fuss over it too much because Hollywood hadn't really discovered comics yet. Um, so we just had the you know the the bar Jazz Rats, um, which was actually named after one of the fans of CrossGen who was on the message boards and had met us at conventions, and you know that was his screen name, so we named the bar after him. Hmm. Um, so we just you know we were like oh let's let's do a scene in the bar and we can just you know populate it with all of these magical characters that um that would be that would make sense in a magical you know dimensional kind of bar so we just Mm -hmm. we just threw a bunch of them in there and i don't know that i don't know whether it was me or brandon um i probably in the script i probably gave brandon a list of hey here's some suggestions and i'm sure he put in his his um his own suggestions as well um but yeah I've, i've heard i've since heard that that now people want to get their hands on that book yeah, I, I should have when when CrossGen closed. I should have, um, uh, you know, I should have stolen a case of issue <laughs> Like had I had I known, there was probably was probably stacks of them in the storage facility. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, knowing Miracle but, Man, he was there. He was there to buy it at, at the. <laughs> I've got a case um, back I, here. I can ship out if you need. <laughs> <laughs> at. Um, <laughs> Uh, f- shortly after that issue, um, <clears throat> there was there was some discussion going on with Marvel about some talent that we were going to bring in, but they ended up going to Marvel, and mm-hmm. you know, th- so there was um, there was a discussion of Marvel. Marvel kind of owed us a solid, and so my suggestion was that, for purely selfish reasons was that Marvel should let us have Doctor Strange for an issue of Mystic. Hmm. And it would be like a full-blown team up between Doctor Strange and Mystic. That would be not that would be unannounced. 
That would be awesome. Uh, it would just like the next issue would show up and it would just be Dr. Strange pops in and they go off and have a magical adventure. That would have been uh, awesome. And, mm-hmm. uh, and right up until the phone call with Marvel, the, the boss, Mark Alessi was, was like, okay, I'll ask for that. Um, and then he chickened out at the end um, <laughs> or, or forgot one or the other, um, but I was ready. I was going to, you know, I was going to write the entire issue and Brandon was going to draw it. And we were going to do our, you know, our Dr. Strange, Dr. Strange shows up from the, uh, you know, from the multiverse and, and then goes back to the Marvel universe at the end. So mm. we got that close. Uh. I would it's sad that the fun. it's sad that the era of intercompany crossovers appears to be behind us because that was exciting. Yeah, well, at least the at least the Marvel and DC ones. Um, yeah. You know uh, when it was when these were just comic books, people sort of uh, you know people came to the table and did um, and did those kind of stories because you know it was good for everybody. Um, right. But now that they're multi billion dollar properties and. Uh, everybody is aware of, of comics and, and, you know, the value that these, uh, I, that these various IP have, um, probably not going to see a whole lot of that again. No sharing toys anymore. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I got mm-hmm. to, I, I got to do plenty of that stuff and I was thrilled with it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah. so I was, I was obviously, um, I was obviously working on that stuff in the right era because we, you know, we got to do a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Ladies, gentlemen, and MBs, that is the end of our show. That is the wonderful Ron Mars coming at us again. Don't forget, January 19th, two really big events. The release of Silver Surfer Rebirth, the first one out of five, uh, by Ron Mars and Ron Lim. And the second thing that slips my mind, I can't I can't remember right now. Uh, don't forget uh, to go and get vaccinated. It's his birthday. I don't, I don't want to get mad at him. It's, it's, it'll be his birthday. <laughs> don't forget to go get vaccinated, get your booster, <laughs> wash your hands, brush your teeth, and hydrate, and tell your parents you love them if they're still around. If not, tell somebody you love them. Love you all. Take care. Uh, and If you want to hear interviews from industry pros, get first looks, and have access to endless comic content, wake up. Please wake up. You're in a coma. Your mother misses you.